Welcome to our customer experience workshop. Um, before we start, uh, I would just have a rough overview of who's in the room, so maybe you can just raise your hand and we'll do a full introduction around it. Maybe if you're working for a utility, please raise your hand. Okay, regulator, energy services, so what do we leave out? It's all, it's all. It's all. Okay. So I guess energy services, in some ways. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, before we start, maybe a rough introduction to energy and energy consulting, uh, if you don't know. So energy itself is one of the largest European utilities with 23 million customers across 11 countries in Europe. Um, we are the third biggest uh, offshore wind uh, developer um, in the world. And basically the business of energy is a little bit of upstream with renewable energy, but we don't have... Come on in. Didn't miss anything there. Um, but the main focus is the grid business and the retail business. Um, so in those 23 um, million customers, we have roughly 360,000 miles of grid installed across the countries. And Energy Consulting is part of the Energy Group, 100% owned subsidiary, uh, doing management consulting, consulting energy, but also other uh, companies outside the Energy Group, uh, especially uh, when it comes to convergence of industries. So for example, car manufacturers that go into EV, uh, topics, etc. Uh, the topic we would be doing with you today in a workshop, and it's a very hands-on workshop where you get to do a lot of stuff by yourself. A um, little bit of guidance from our side, but the main thing is to experience it yourself. Um, would be customer experience, which we call CX. And I would give a brief introduction, and then Graham and Daniel will guide you through the workshop, and also Mackie um, from, from the Energy Consulting Office, and Chris also. Um, we'll introduce later. So we're talking about um, customer experience, um, CX, basically it was supposed and it's, it's supposed to be our new battlefield, especially in Europe, where we have a slightly different situation than in the US, but still um, the topics um, are relevant for the US market also. Um, in Europe, you have a lot of churn, of course, there are like 20 to 30 percent churn rate of customers in the retail business, which is, of course, not comparable at all to the US. But you also have the topic that you need to up and cross sell energy services, which is a similar situation um, in the US. And for that, you need to get closer to your customer. And the way we did it with an energy is that, um, of course, if you hear customer experience, it sounds like a cost game. Uh, because investing in your customer, increasing the experience seems costly. But the way we did it is to create basically bottom line impact. So we created 60, roughly $70 million bottom line impact in EBIT uh, for the energy group by establishing the uh, CX factory. Um, just to give you a rough, rough estimation, that's like 10% of the EBIT we're generating. Uh, so it's a significant number. And when we talk about CX, there is basically two KPIs which are very relevant. And on the one hand, of course, is the customer satisfaction, uh, where we see that the CX champions go from 85 to 100%. 85 doesn't seem very high, but if you're coming from the utility, especially in Europe, where you have roughly 1.1 customer touch points per year, one of them being the bill and creating bill shock, um, that, that's a pretty high number. On the other hand, the cost to serve per customer and year range from zero to twenty dollars, coming from sixty to seventy per customer. Of course, this is dependent on IT systems that you use, but especially on channels that you provide for your customers. Is there a phone channel? Is there a written communication? Is there a service where people are going out uh, to the side of the customer? And the combination of CX is really creating a, a second to none customer experience and a very high CSAT rate in combination with a low cost uh, model. Yeah? And um, so I'm, I'm responsible for energy consulting for the retail business, but I have been also appointed CEO for our digital attacker, which basically was the result of this, where we uh, said we built it completely greenfield. Uh, to have a second to none customer experience where we don't have any legacy, and that's what we achieved also. 
when you look at um, companies, and not only utilities, but when you look at companies that do customer experience, that do take it seriously, um, you see that they have a higher confidence level. This is a self-assessment number, uh, but anyhow, in all categories, that you see profitability, quality, growth, market share, customer retention rate, they outperform the CX laggards. So it's, it's also a cultural mind shift in terms of giving you confidence to deal with your customer, but in the end, it's also creating results. Yeah. How do you define laggards and champions? So champions, and as I said, it's a self-assessment. They have been dealing with what you will be dealing in the workshop. They have a clear um, a view on their customer. They have a clear view on the pain points. They have a clear view on the customer journey. Uh, especially for different products and services. Um, and they have been investing a lot of time and also a little bit of money into optimizing their customer experience to come to a CSET that's from 85 and above. So it's the actual metrics of Yes. Gotcha. And this is all just for utilities that, that those stats, or that's from broadly? Um, this, the source here is just... That, that is not only um, utilities. Okay, this is, every, this is cross industry. Yes, cross industry, self-assessment for um, companies that do customer experience. So we look at customer experience um, across a journey of a customer. You have like creating the awareness, you are going to be considered as a supplier. You have the acquisition phase, you have a service, and then you have a loyalty phase which is typical for Europe, and there might be a different journey in the US. But basically, you have your current customer experience with your pain point where you are below expectations of the customer. And mainly CX boosts you to the next level. Yeah? And the next level is meet the requirements of the expected CX, but the champions also exceed it. Yeah? Customer delight is above that one. And um, to give you a little bit of the framework we applied, and that's a little bit of a different approach than usually consultants do it. So normally you would say you would start with the strategy, and then you drill it down, and then you put it into every corner of the company. That's exactly how we not did it. Um, what we did was really put hands on the operating system. So we understood the customer first, and Graham and Daniel will guide you through this. We picked up one journey. Um, so one of the journeys is I move. Uh, what you have to know is that the main reasons for customers leaving us in Europe was when they moved the apartment or the house, uh, because that's when they suddenly think about energy and uh, getting uh, a new provider. Uh, except one market where it's actually debt, um, the main reason for customers leaving us. Um, but the main one is moving, so we picked up the iMove journey, we mapped it, we did a blueprint, and then we went to um, designing and testing and scaling it and really improving the bottom line impact of the specific journey to prove that the approach works. And coming from there, and this is basically what we will touch in the workshop also, in a um, comprehensive form, but on a, on a, sh a shorter form of course, um, we took it from there and then moved basically into culture, into capabilities, and deriving the strategy out of it. So the strategy basically was the end result of what we did and not the first thing to start with. Um, so you, of course you have tools that Daniel, for example, um, will show you. You need to build up the expertise, and you also need to build up the organization, but you have to have the culture for uh, customer experience also. Because, of course, you have a lot of legacy and siloed organizations with larger, large scale corporations. And the culture to take it from the customer and, um, and design a customer experience and a customer journey um, that is completely different to what you have seen before is really a cultural change and a cultural transformation. So that's basically it for the moment from my side, and then Graham will show you um, how we plan to integrate you into the CX work today. Thank you very much. CX Factory is Energy Consulting's tested method to optimize your customer experience, track your customer experience performance with hard data, and harness industry best practices to foster an agile, customer-centric organization. In our customer experience factory, we start to work differently. If we build a customer experience together, it will be more efficient, 
and better than if we do it in each market separately. We strive for speed and impact at scale in delivering superior experiences for our customers and in realizing operating cost efficiencies. So what we are actually doing is defining and harmonizing the customer journey. We identify the customer sentiment there and uh, elaborate solutions. The energy landscape is quickly pivoting to customer first mentality. And for utilities, that means going beyond the traditional services to streamline the experience for their customers. We're lucky enough to be in charge of experience at one of the most exciting points in digital science, the tipping point between what we do now, what we do for the future. With Customer Experience Factory, our clients have the tools they need to not only deliver quality services to their customers, but to create opportunities within their organizations to innovate and cultivate new thinking. So that's the, the really quick introduction to um, what the CX Factory is. Uh, she's taking you through kind of the, the basic framework. Um, but what we wanted to do today uh, is actually bring it to life and to do a real case study example. So to start off with, my name's Graham. Uh, this is Daniel. Uh, Daniel is sat over here. Between the two of us, we'll guide you through the workshop. Both of us were involved in the, the setup or the operational setup, let's say, of the CX factory uh, within Europe. So it wasn't a big surprise. I'm not a local from here. Uh, it's slightly <laughs> um, Chris, we brought in, uh, is from National Grid and has been very kind to basically support us in developing out the sort of customer journey for an onboarding customer uh, in Rhode Island. And that's going to be really the kind of case study we're going to use today and get you guys to come up with some solutions for how we can improve the customer journey at uh, National Grid in Rhode Island. Chris, do you want to maybe do a quick introduction from your side? Of course, and um, I think to everyone from Texas, it'll be just as obvious that I'm not from here as <laughs> my accent might as well be Scottish um, relative to, to folks from Texas. So thanks, thanks for having me. Maybe two, or two minutes on grid and then I'll talk about my role and try and tie it to, to what we're doing today. Um, so, National Grid is an international energy delivery uh, organization in, in the UK. We own and operate uh, the country's gas and electric transmission uh, assets. In the States, we have uh, an unregulated uh, business that uh, invests both in uh, renewable generation and transmission assets, um, as well as through a corporate venture arm uh, in, in early stage energy technology companies. Uh, we also have in the focus earlier today um, a regulated electric and gas distribution business where we serve about 20 million um, customers through 6 million accounts, um, both gas and electric, basically. Good chunks of upstate and downstate New York, um, and basically all of Massachusetts except for Boston and the immediate environs, um, and then essentially uh, all, of, all of Rhode Island. Uh, my role at, at National Grid is uh, Director of Customer Energy Management. So um, my teams look after uh, our energy efficiency program strategy and policy uh, and, and, and planning uh, in New England as well as our LMI, our low moderate income customer strategy. Um, and so in addition to that, I'll sort of be playing the role today of our um, sort of VP of Customer Care. Um, and though I, I don't own the processes that we're going to go through up there, I'm certainly not a, not a deep expert on them. Um, I am trying to sort of shamelessly take advantage of them to advance my purposes um, <laughs> and, 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 and agenda in terms of you know advancing the way that we engage and interact with customers um, around both energy efficiency as well as uh, uh, some of our low moderate income customer uh, programs. And we really see sort of this customer onboarding process and this customer side process is one of the real sort of core moments that matter and that really give us an opportunity that we haven't traditionally leveraged as well as we could um, in order to build a good customer experience, to build some trust and then leverage that into getting customers to take some actions that you know are not only in their interest but ultimately put us in a better position to serve the system and to serve all of our customers. Perfect. So with that, I guess a lot of people in the room have probably been sat either in a car or on a plane all day today. Uh, if you can mostly just jump up on your feet and we'll gather around the poster at the back so realize if we don't do this, it can be very, very small for you all to see. So what we typically do in the, the CX factory is that the first thing to, to understand is what is the as-is customer journey from the point of the customer initially picking up the phone and saying, hey, I want to become a customer, through to effectively their service has begun, they've got their billing, uh, and they might have potentially had a home energy audit, for example. So for us, 
in terms of from a CX point of view, we want to understand what are the key different milestones, what are the, the what's the customer sentiment as we move through those various milestones, what channels do the customers have for interacting with us, uh, and what are the KPIs that we're measuring the business against at the moment. So it's basically to get a really good as-is understanding of where do we currently stand. From that as-is understanding, we can then dive into the, the uh, sort of the solution mode and try and solve some of those, those pain points for the customer. So Chris, starting from, from the left, what's the kind of first few steps that a typical customer um, goes through at National Grid? Sure, I mean, so the, the first thing typically is, particularly if they're moving into the area from, from somewhere else, is just to understand who their electric and gas distribution utility um, would be. Um, you know, that's typically, uh, you know, kind of word of mouth experience or more commonly today, sort of a Google sort of, uh, you know, web search type of, um, of, of, of interaction. Um, customer kind of, you know, figures out who to call. Um, and then, you know, typically they go to our website. Um, there aren't particularly robust tools to enter a lot of that information online. So that typically, that website experience typically leads them to a phone number um, and a call into, into the contact center. So effectively from here, we're basically, it's an online journey effectively where the customer is um, searched for us on Google, from that they find a number, and then they're forced to, to uh, a voice channel, is that right? Essentially, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are limited opportunities to enter some information online, but for the most part, you know, 98% of customers ends up being, uh, you know, a call into the, into the context. Perfect. And then once they get into the context, is that their choice, are you saying, or that you don't give them the alternative? We don't give them a, a, a large, and there are, you know, some specific, we we'll get too much into the weeds or drivers of that where we have to validate some information, um, some limitations, frankly, in terms of our billing system around interfaces between that and sort of more public facing channels. Um, so, you know, it is, there are opportunities to do more there, but a lot of it is kind of driven by the kind of reality of the, the situation in which, in which we operate. I mean, that's a core part of CX as well, is understanding, you know, with your bank, with your telco, what's it like as a customer? Do you expect the same of your utility? That they can offer me the same services? So part of what we go through today is understanding actually what can we, what can we steal shamelessly from, from other industries. So they pick up the phone, Chris, uh, then what's typically the, the conversation you're trying to drive there? Yeah, so I mean, I think, you know, we're in sort of a period of transition here, and I think this is where this is exciting, there's an opportunity, and you know, I'll be intentionally provocative but I think that you know for a long time the purpose of the conversation was to get off the phone as quickly as possible because time on the call was a cost driver um, and to collect the bare minimum of information that we needed to collect not really to drive a relationship with the customer necessarily but to enable a relationship with their meter and their checking account because those were sort of the two touch points that we had to understand how much to bill them and then and then to convert that into the into, into the cash cycle um, so you know for a long time, that was the interaction from our end. It was basic sort of demographic information around, you know, what's the service address, when do you want service established, um, do a credit check, so, um, you know, get information uh, necessary to um, to do that. Um, and, um, and essentially that was the extent of the, of the conversation. And then from there, what would be the kind of next action? So we've got here the two different journeys. Yep. Should you maybe possibly elaborate oh, on Sure. That? So I mean, again, maybe make that distinction as well between sort of old and then where we'd like to head. So I think, you know, in, in the old world, the next interaction was we'd send them a bill of their next billing cycle, hope they pay it. And, you know, <laughs> when, which is not infrequently the case, they have some sticker shock, you know, during a, a cold snap or, um, you know, during a period when, they're, um, when their usage was high. And they call and say, you know, what the heck's going on? Why is my bill so high? Um, and you know, we try to react um, to that. Um, but I think, you know, increasingly, um, what we're trying to do, and I think what um, you know the, the, the journey here sort of represents, um, is an attempt to do a couple of things. So, you know, number one is to sort of lay the groundwork to establish um, and position ourselves. Um, in the customer's eyes as a utility and do two things. Number one, it's just easy to do business with. It's sort of one of the core things that we look at um, and sort of evaluate our success on. Do customers feel like we're easy to do business with? Number two, in a world where customers increasingly have um, options and are, in a lot of cases, sort of overwhelmed with the choices that they have, can we position ourselves as that customer's trusted energy advisor and really help them to navigate sort of this um, evolving energy landscape. So that's sort of, you know, goal number one is to create a customer experience that allows us 
to sort of cement that customer perception of their experience with us on this on this dimension on, on in those in those two areas. Um, secondly, getting a little bit more tactical, um, you know, this initial interaction is really one where we feel like there are opportunities to steer a customer into taking a specific action that again is you know is good for them, but is also supports our ability to do things that are good for the system that lower our cost to serve all customers. Um, and we really typically, you know, at least as a starting point, really kind of segment that experience into um, a market rate versus, uh, you know, a low-income customer um, or a low-moderate income customer um, experience. And so, you know, for market rate customers, um, the, the intent here really is to educate and promote energy efficiency programs. Um, and to essentially tee up and, lead and, and drive a really easy um, enrollment process in the home energy audit, which is our primary channel through which um, we engage and ultimately serve residential customers um, on, on energy efficiency programs. Um, additionally, um, we have an online marketplace where um, we provide and sell sort of curated suite of products um, that drive energy savings to, to customers. Uh, it's our, in our interest to do that because we get savings credit for um, the sales of those equipment, which ultimately tie back to our ability to achieve uh, saving targets and associated uh, performance um, incentives. So for, for market rate customers, that's really the what, what we hope and intend to be the sort of go forward uh, focus of, 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 that inter, of that interaction. Um, for um, income eligible customers, um, who for obvious reasons, tend to have um, you know, poor on-time bill payment performance, higher arrears, increased rates of uh, collections activity and, 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 and terminations. Um, the goal is really, one, to educate customers about the really robust set of offerings that we have to help put those customers in a situation to better manage sort of questions around both energy affordability as well as volatility um, in, 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 in their bill. Um, and also to introduce them to and engage them through uh, a, a channel um, that we have developed that's really primarily focused on serving um, income eligible customers. Our experience is that customers in that segment have a hard time kind of accessing value from grid through our sort of digital um, and, and, and phone based channels whether you know, there's sort of digital divide or access to technology issues, English as a second language issues, um, et, et, et cetera. Um, we have developed uh, a team of consumer advocates who are essentially, um, I kind of think of them as sort of social workers who meet sales reps, um, and they have a specific territory within, within Rhode Island. They engage through community action programs and other social service and, and advocacy agencies, trying to meet customers where they are um, educate them about uh, programs and offers that are available in Camelot for customers, guide them through that um, in, in enrollment process, and ultimately, you know, put that customer on a path to be in a better position to not fall behind on, on their bill. Again, you know, I think that's good for the income eligible customer um, in that it keeps them out of paid loan situations or into arrears and collections and ultimately termination situations. It's also good for the rest of our customers because it reduces our cost to serve. Um, those income eligible customers, we can help them stay on top of, of their bill. And so the primary focus of that interaction is just to get that customer on a good path um, to stay ahead of the game and stay um, and not falling behind on their, on their bill and all the, you know, the negative things that can come. Okay. Okay. So just a quick question on that point. So when you're talking to an income eligible customer, yes. and you're going through this process, I'm just trying to connect the dots. Yes. So you might say, I talked to those customers and they wish they could pay weekly. Yeah. Right, because paying once a month is, is a lot of money, and they'd rather pay weekly. Is that part of this process? It could be. I mean, it's that's not an explicit, um, but really the you know the, the purpose of that consumer advocate conversation um, is to sit down with the customer and figure out sort of the range of options that work for that customer that makes sense for that customer to get them into a program. Um, so we do not have an explicit, you know, sort of pay more frequently program, but certainly if a customer prepay or whatever the program yeah. might be. I'm just trying to so go back to your chart up front. There's kind of you know which which comes a bunch of different yeah. work clunks, and that would be in the kind of product design work clunk, not the customer engagement thing. But there's obviously a pretty good connection. Correct, yeah. and I think that's ultimately where we want to land this afternoon. Yeah. As you say, but this afternoon, this morning, pardon me, where we yeah. say where we are, yeah. where we say yeah. um, you know we get to the end of this, we say this is a particular pain point, and then what does that look like in terms of uh, payment option solutions? 
what are the different ways that customers would actually like to interact with us. So just really quickly, um, Chris, I'm going to give you the pen, uh, and what I'd like you to do as I guide us through from left to right, to yeah. summary, draw on what the customer sentiment is, so green being good, yeah. orange being average, red being bad. Yeah. So just to recap, so the, the customer journey starts with uh, I as a, as a customer in Rhode Island move into the new area, I want to start my supply, I look online, uh, so I search online, I find the National Grid as my local supplier. National Grid then directs me to, to pick up the phone. In that phone interaction, I capture my billing details, my home details. Based on that, the customer is segmented into one of two groups. Either they're a market rate customer or they're a low income customer. So depending on that, either if they're a market rate customer, they're pushed towards some of the energy efficiency online um, uh, solutions. So in terms of, can I buy um, smart home devices or energy efficiency? Uh, I'm scheduled with the home energy audit, and it concludes with me getting a series of recommendations. On the low income rate, it's a slightly different journey where I'm pushed towards uh, the local consumer advocate. So Chris, would you mind really quickly sketching onto that, the, sure. the, the customer sentiment? Yeah, so I mean, I think, you know, it's sort of, you know, neutral to a little bit less than neutral early on. You got a lot going on. You're trying to, you know, call in the utility and spend the time on the phone. It's probably not top of your list. Or, you know, you're excited about a new home. I mean, I think that sort of the search for information can be a little bit confusing. Um, you end up, um, you know, in Rhode Island, it's pretty straightforward. We're the only um, distribution utility. But a lot of times you do Google searches and you get sort of confusing paid ads for um, the competitive suppliers, and it's not clear sort of what that relationship is all in works. So I think you know that probably you know brings 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 it down a notch. You know maybe you get a little bit of relief. Um, you know when you figure out sort of who to call and what the next step is. You know probably a little bit sort of frustrated. Well, you know I don't have to call. It's 2019. Can I do this online or through my phone? Um, and you know I think. Hopefully we answer the phone, you know, quickly and have a, a, a pleasant uh, and professional um, experience. But I think this is really the opportunity now to sort of really improve that um, experience. One, you know, through asking sort of smart, relevant questions that really tie back to the customer's specific situation, um, and then put us in a position to put, you know, sort of the right offer, the right program in front of the right customer at, at, at this particular at this particular time. Do Perfect. I so I'm going to pause you there, okay. so I think that's where we're going to focus in sure. the workshop. If everyone can possibly take their, their seats again, I'm going to hand to, to Daniel to get us through the, the, the next section. Perfect. Thanks so much, Chris, Graham. Um, now, this is the starting point, and uh, if you have uh, seen uh, the framework slide uh, that Kasia presented before, uh, the main part that we focus on, that we started with, uh, that was the customer journey mapping. I think you realized uh, what, uh, what the output here is. And also to get a feel for you know what are the pain points of the customer. Now, for the sake of this very short uh, workshop, we have obviously prepared it. Usually, we would uh, we would stretch it out a little bit. Um, we applied something that's called Google Design Sprint. Who knows what that is? Who has used it? Maybe a couple of ones. used already or heard of it? Okay, perfect. So uh, what we have done usually it's it's a uh, five day process or workshop sprint um, where you go from we have a problem to actually we have a solution that is somehow tangible, meaning mostly it's a click dummy. Um, so not only an idea, but also a <coughs> sketch and also something clickable that you can test already with the customer and then incorporate its feedback, uh, their feedback and then you know uh, iteratively um, improve it. So what we've done at Energy Consulting, because five days in the corporate world is actually quite a lot. So in taking teams out for a whole week, uh, you know, we're not a startup usually. Um, <laughs> So uh, we, we try to squeeze it as, as much as we can and still benefit from the outcome. So we, we are doing this in three days. And uh, we want to give you a bit of a flavor for it. So again, we will not do the three days here, obviously, in uh, 20 minutes. Uh, but we'll do two exercises with you, um, just to give you a bit of a flavor of you know, what this is. And uh, um, the first one is called Crazy Aids. Do you know Crazy Aids? You have used it before, maybe? Okay. Okay. So maybe you uh, you you have uh, used them as well. Um, we will just looking at the teams. I think we are more or less even. If maybe one person from that table could join that table just for the sake of the two exercises, and we're roughly three person uh, each at the table. Would that be okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. <laughs> so uh, crazy eights. Why do I call crazy eights? Uh, because 
you've maybe seen a bit piece of uh, big piece of paper on the table, and guess what? There are eight uh, slots <laughs> or compartments. And as teams, um, uh, we would like you to get together now and uh, brainstorm very quickly, well, up to eight ideas. <laughs> and uh, I will time it very sharply, so we'll get uh, you will hear a, a noise uh, every minute, which is the sign for you to then switch on to the next idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, uh, there will be no grades. Uh, it's really just an, uh, one of the methods to not take time, because we should discuss any idea for an hour a day, a week. Um, to be honest, Google found that um, after a certain period of time, actually um, you can only do you know, a little bit of um, tweaking here and there, 95% of the insight will come before. So we try to foster this environment, so uh, don't, don't worry if I'll be kind of, kind of hard, and I will time it now. I see already some people grab the pen or have been assigned a pen. <laughs> um, if, if there could be, just to make it easier for us, um, one person writing, so taking a pen and writing the ideas that you come up with. I vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> I see there's democracy going on. <laughs> who's that? Who's that one? Do you have the team? Yeah. 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 Then you send it to me. And don't worry, it's really just to have an idea. Sorry, so I think you just don't, right? So what we went through is uh, we went through the I John journey from National Grid, and I think Chris explained exactly what the pain points are. Um, so let's try to focus our ideas, uh, well, eight uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully per table, on focusing that idea. Now, Chris, could you just quickly uh, summarize what was the what was the main point uh, or pain point at that at that point in time? Sure. So I think you know number one is just being sort of sensitive to customer time and creating a you know a seamless and easy experience for customers to get us the information we need and for us to validate that information necessary to enroll sort of the very basics about their situation in their account in order to start sending the bills. I think where there's that opportunity is how can we use that interaction in order to both educate as well as engage and ultimately drive customers to take advantage of uh, offers and programs that we otherwise have to spend money you know, doing outreach and education um, around at a point where they're not as directly engaged because they're not just you know, signing up for new service at that point. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. And now we we will it will be fast paced. Don't worry. You know there are no grades. As I said, it's really to come up with uh, as many ideas as possible. You are free to do more than eight, um, and it's really no no comments yet, no feedback. We'll just get it. Question. Uh, so are we starting at the blue boxes on the right, or are we starting at the orange boxes on the left? So it, um, let's focus on that sort of middle part where the blue boxes start. <laughs> So when, when we say, okay, now it's a call, right? We want the customer to call us, which is kind of a hassle for him, and also maybe not optimal in terms of upselling, etc. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna accept the fact they've had a modest to to not so good relationship so far, and how do you recover? Correct. Rather than go back and fix the beginning. Correct. Um, <laughs> good good point. Okay. Um, Just checking. The idea is here, um, and to be honest, I've seen a lot of uh, Google designs can fail. You say, "Oh, we have their problem. We have their. Oh, there's another problem. Let's focus on everything." Um, if you're not, if you're not crystal clear on what you're trying to fix, um, then you know it's going to fail. I'm with you. Usually, we would start with you know the, sort of the beginning and then go point okay. by point. So we start with the customer on the phone, and you want to know what do we do to improve. Your, your ability to enroll in programs. But or if he, uh, maybe we have an idea too for him to not call us. Maybe we have some other yeah, ideas. Yeah, you can start right here before the phone call. So if you think about it also just from the, from the diagram point of view, you've got two dips in customer experience. You're really talking about the second one here, mm -hmm. which is either right before or after they, they make that phone call, that, that switch point. Um, but the point is to be creative. Exactly. If you can have something that solves this and that, how about it, man? Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, and also, just to, to, to broaden sort of the, the scope a little bit, it, 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 it is not just to enroll customers in new programs. It is generally to advance sort of our relationship with the customer around being seen as easy to do business with and cementing our role as that customer's trusted energy advisor um, across sort of the broad kind of energy landscape and the range of things that um, you know a customer can do with us. Okay. Any other questions? All right. 
Then, as I said, I will time hard, uh, eight times one minute, and uh, you have uh, you have somebody each on the table, right, who is writing. It's really just about writing. Uh, no uh, no pictures yet, uh, unless you want to and have the time. Uh, we will focus on the sketching in a little bit. All right, let's start with the first minute. But guys, thank you so much. This is uh, probably not very intuitive for, for most of you. Thanks for, for going along. I see actually all the teams have eight ideas. To be honest, uh, that's rarely the case. <laughs> so that's good. I think you can uh, you can congratulate yourself. So now what, I will give you two minutes to in the teams decide which one idea you would go forward with. So now just two minutes. Um, so not a lot of time for discussions, but I think you discuss it pretty pretty intensively already since you have been so far ahead. Of Again, let's focus on what Chris said. What is the problem? What is the scope? How do we how do we drive it? And what is your best shot? Your one best shot out of these eight. And I'll give you two minutes. Guys, can I have your attention, please? What's that? I'm really trying thinking about that one. Guys, can I have your attention, please? <laughs> okay, let's go to this team. Who is this guy? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have one. You have one. You have one. You also have one. We may. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have one. All right. So here's here's the second part. I told you we are we're going to do two exercises. So now you have done the group work. Um, now there's a, a little bit of space for individual work and. Uh, Graham has handed out these kinds of uh, well, templates, mm -hmm. iPhone templates. <laughs> you can imagine what you have to do, right? And there are three of them by total coincidence. So please now individually, um, and you have, by the way, uh, in the backs uh, on your chairs, there is a, you should be at least a pen. Um, if not, we'll get you one. And now, again, individually, you have up to 10 minutes. Please do the following. You have an idea, you have discussed it, I think, a bit, you know, you know where it fits process-wise, logic-wise. But um, because I asked you to, you did not sketch it yet, right? So this is just words, this, these are no pictures. Now, what we would do now is to have a three-step approach. Don't ask me why three. Three is just a good number. And to be honest, uh, up on um, more than five is anyway confusing. But let's, uh, for mostly for the customers, but definitely for the developers and designers, um, to go in three steps to what would you, what would your solution look like when I, on my mobile phone, would go either to an app if you choose so, or I heard digital online self service, so responsive websites, or whatever you might envision. Um, what would it look like? So now comes the translation of your words into a visual three-step process, and I think you can already imagine what would happen then afterwards with that. We would discuss that with our designers, with our uh, UX designers, and also some developers if code is needed, and then try to, well, figure these steps out, bring them to life on a click dummy, and we will show you later how that looks, in order, as I said in the beginning, to go to, uh, with the customer, go through this three-step process, and then get his feedback. So, sorry, I stole your papers. Sure. Individually, 10 minutes, please start sketching as well as you possibly can. I mean, not all of us are artists. But the, mo the main point is, it should be as self-explanatory as possible. So just imagine, after that 10 minutes, you hand it over to me. I'm the designer, and I'm supposed to design it without your input afterwards. Any questions before the time starts? Good. Ten minutes. Thanks so much. <laughs> Everybody breathe. <laughs> 
All right. Um, now, uh, could I ask someone from this table to uh, quickly present their idea, and we'll ask Chris um, as our insider slash uh, customer proxy <laughs> uh, to provide a quick, uh, quick response, quick feedback to that. So, who wants from this table? We'll go through each table. Okay. So um, we said online self-service was an absolute must, and it's connected, integrated with all your systems, mm -hmm. so that I can, as a new user, go on to my phone and get and connect and become a, a, a customer of yours, and it automatically uh, approves and all that stuff before I'm off the phone. So I don't have to talk to somebody. But if I have questions. And I am a customer, then I can see what usage was beforehand, um, what people were, um, even if I'm new to the community, what the ultimate averages were, things like that to shoot for. And then I'd be able to see what my program eligibility is, if I can be a happy home audit kind of thing, or a car, or solar school programs during the community, um, lower use or increased efficiency, either way. And then on the third one is like community involvement mm -hmm. things that allows me to build more community with people in the community. And I'm new to it, so I think it's good. Okay, great. Thank you. I love it. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously, um, increasing self-service channels um, it, it, it is huge. Um, you know, the community angle is not one that we really thought about in terms of connecting folks to their neighbors, but, it, you know, it makes a ton of sense. Um, and you know it can also be like a force multiplier for us. So in a way, we don't have to rely on utility employees and utility to spend. Um, we can give people access to information and resources just from word of mouth and connecting. So I think that's fantastic. Um, you know, I think the the hard parts will be. You know, I wish you know just connected to your systems, right? I mean, I wish it were that easy. That really um, is a challenge. Um, and then. Um, we'd have to be creative about some of the usage um, history just because there's some privacy concerns there and so figure out a way to maybe aggregate by neighborhood or by similar homes if we have information about the home. There's likely something that, you know, that we, that we can do there. So you think? Great ideas. Thank you. Thank you. This group, who wants? Um, instead of the customer reaching the utility, and we incorporate, and then we incorporate where if the customer is going and signing up for lease, we reach out to the apartment complex, all you know, over us who the customer is signing up for lease. They reach out to us that saying that hey, this customer signed up, we have already asked if utility reaches to you, are you okay to start the service? So instead of the customer calling us, the utility itself reaches out to the customer. Okay, you know, we want to start your service. We understand that you are signing up the lease on this day. Can we start the conversation now? And it's all through live chat or text. The customer responds back, provides all the required documentation, and towards the end, we offer the customer to make your process smooth. Can you offer connections with internet provider, cable provider, water services? Can we offer what schools? Uh, in that region, connect you with the schools, all that kind of stuff. So, provide a value added service. We actually did that um, with, at Energy in Poland, ah. where we worked with the, uh, real estate developers, and right. then they basically, it's a bit of a different process uh, right. in Poland, but they registered the whole building, each flat, and then we just needed to put in right. the customer number so it goes into the similar direction. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I, think that, I think that's great. Um, and it's something we've been thinking about as well in terms of, you know, there's more than just the utility of the customer seeing right. that they're making this move. And does that give us an opportunity to partner with some of these other service providers? You know, we can offer customers sort of bundles and potentially get them sort of discounts on some of these other services. Hopefully we get some credit for that in the customer's eyes for introducing them to that sort of smoother experience, that money saving experience. Um, to the extent that service provider um, is competing for that business and we're providing them with a qualified lead, you know, you, you can make an argument that we should share in that, so that, that, that value, value mm -hmm. um, as, as well. So, um, yeah, no, I think that is, uh, I love it, and that is um, very consistent with some things that we're thinking about that are a little bit outside of this, but you can see how they very tightly would, um, you know, fit together. Cool, thank you. This group. So we were looking at having partial self-service to start with to get the initial um, 
as customer information. So either an app or a website, go on, put your name, the address you're planning to move into, your phone number, and have a natural grid call them back or have a channel online. And the idea is that during that time, you've got your address, so you know exactly what services are already there, whether they've got uh, electric, gas, uh, uh, appliances, or whatever they need. And when you call back, you already have a uh, script for that particular address. I see you're moving into this older building, you've got, they haven't had an energy audit in 26 years and so on, and you proactively know a lot more about the customer mm -hmm. and, than they do yep. moving to a new location and using that information to uh, build services and things that you can go uh, and sell the customer. Yeah, great minds think alike. I think when we get to the, the demo, you're going to see some, some pieces there. Um, that look a lot like uh, many of the things that you were describing. Because I think um, you know we see um, you know very similar um, opportunities there. So um, brilliant, nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least. <laughs> um, just so we had a few of them. One of the things that we kind of stuck out to us was regarding reaching out to the customer, or that customer reaching out to you. So. You've already had a customer who's already been living there. They've been they rang you up saying that I want my final bill to be sent out. That should automatically trigger something on the system to kind of say, okay, they're leaving, they're going to leave at that time. So a reminder for a month or so, <coughs> about two months' time, from one of the LMI or a new homeowner kind of thing that's coming into that home. So um, that should trigger a email. I mean a mailer to be sent out to the home. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we were thinking, obviously you're not going to have the information of the customer. It's almost like a new homeowner who is coming in with a little care package of, mm -hmm. say, like bulbs and things. Because like, when you're moving in, the last thing you want to be thinking about. So just that kind of warm, fuzzy feeling that they get to kind of see that, oh, they're thinking about it. You. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we were thinking, basically. So you do the reach out before now and make it easy for them to get either by phone call or going online to be able to do it when you need to do to get so, that was all right, yeah. Again, no, um, love it. I mean, I think that welcome package is something else we're looking at um, as well, both in terms of sort of developing that relationship and you guys an opportunity to sort of, you know, introduce the concept of energy efficiency and energy efficiency of appliances to customers. Also, a hook back to the marketplace, say, hey, you like this? You know, you can go buy 30 more of them and we'll get you a deal on that. Um, and then the sort of warm handoff to the new occupant um, is also really interesting idea. I mean, I think we have been looking at that um, in the context of landlords. So one of the yeah. things that we hear is that, you know, the old tenant moves out, the new tenant, you know, forgets to set up service or, yeah. you know, doesn't do it in a timely manner that, and then it ends up becoming a landlord's problem because the tenant's upset when they move in and there's no yeah. power. And then there's also, you know, there's risk to the physical plant as well as the property because during the winter and there's no heat, pipes can freeze. And so, you know, we're looking at how can we give landlords the opportunity to sort of temporarily take that bill on yeah. um, and then automate a transition to the new tenant when they, when they come in. So, bottom line. Perfect. Thanks so much. And thanks again for your, uh, well, uh, <laughs> flexibility on trying this out. Um, what we will now do is show you um, what we have pre-produced based on uh, the same uh, kind of uh, pain points uh, and problem statement in order to show you a little bit of how we would continue that process. Thanks so much. Perfect. So as Daniel said, what we do is we take these sheets and we effectively hand it to um, our UX and, and digital designers and within a day they try and produce a, a click dummy which we try and bring it to life help iterate with customers and also get buy-in from business. So as coincidence would have it, we almost have an identical um, uh, click dummy to what the group at the back described. So we have here National Grid's uh, website, or a mock-up effectively of what National Grid's website mm -hmm. looks like in Rhode Island. But we've added in an extra button, which is to start the online process. So to actually go through the full process online, rather than um, picking up the phone straight away. <coughs> So we thought about this from the perspective of, um, if I'm a customer, ideally what I want when I have my uh, conversation with National Grid is that it's as informed as possible. So the conversation isn't about me just providing you with information, but rather you saying to me, hey, I know all the key information about you, and now it's going to be a conversation which is really focused in on what, um, what I'm interested in. So it's, if it's energy efficiency, it's energy efficiency. If it's ways to lower my bill, it's ways to lower my bill. So you can see here as we walk our way through the, the click dummy, I'm trying to capture as much information from the customer as possible. Also giving them the messaging early to say, you know, look, we will phone you back. We want to verify your, your identity, that's really important to us. Uh, and it also allows us to then have that cross and upsell conversation with the customer where, sorry, yes, the gentleman at the back, 
On the previous screen, can they click both electric and gas, or just one or the other? So they can select both. Um, within the dummy, I've just got it where it's just one, but it would be, uh, the possibility would be there to have, have both. So we'll continue through. Uh, again, capturing address information. Also important for us at this stage is to capture information about the type of props they are. So we're thinking back to the segmentation of the journey. It's really nice if we can figure out up front, you know, like, are they a high income customer? Are they an income uh, where they own the property? Do they rent the property? Is it a multi-family unit? Uh, and then finally, as we get towards the end of the customer journey, we want to try and drive them towards more digital channels. They've already proven that they like digital channels, so if we can get them to sign up for this page for paperless billing by default, rather than the other way around, which is the current, which would be, you have to opt in, rather, you could opt out, because you're clearly a digitally enabled customer, and this is how you like to interact with your utility. And then we get to the last step, and the last step is to say to the customer, look, we can pull the information from the customer service center to say, we know how long it's roughly going to be until you're going to get called. So some really positive messaging to the customer to say, hey, we know your time's important, we'll phone you back in, in 30 minutes. But, and this is the big but to all of this, this is all nice and theoretical to see this as a, as a click dummy, there's the reality which is that most utilities in the US operate on non-SAP, non-Oracle, it might be a mainframe system. So how do I get this to integrate back then into my existing IT infrastructure? And that's where we go to the, the, the next step. The next step would be to think about something like RPA, so robotic process automation. And what we're trying to do is take this nice stickered front end, drag that information out and dump it back into the 1990s um, billing platform that most utilities, or a lot of utilities certainly in the US, the, the uh, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> So what I'll show you how this, this works um, is effectively like so. So it's basically through a macro extracting information that the customers put in and dumping it manually then into the mainframe in the same way that an agent would do it. So if an agent currently is going through manually filling that in, well a computer could do that automatically for them without having to update anything on the, on the systems or on the uh, systems or the back end at all. It's just effectively a stick in the system. Well. So that's just to give you a feel for what we try and flip in, in a day uh, on creating an MVP. Um, from there, it's then about testing it with the customer. From there, it's about us saying, you know, look, is that actually helping you? Is that solving the, the, the problems? Um, Mackie. Great, yeah, so just to wrap up, I wanna, uh, I'm Mackie, I'm a partner in the Boston office for, for ICOM, so we call ourselves MG Consulting. Um, a few things I'd like to just pull out from this group that you may or may not have noticed. Uh, a, uh, a large group of us working on this in advance came up with a very similar idea. But also more interestingly, I thought, for this group, um, you heard ideas in a couple of different channels with a couple of different methods, all of which mirrored things that were a little bit like and some things that were new for him. So a small group of people who know very little about the up upfront process with a structured process uh, and resources behind it, so we've got a design team in, in Germany, uh, can really do a lot. Uh, and I think for us, this process is, is one we wanted to be able to show people, hey, it's also kind of fun. Um, so one thing you should all be aware of, we do have our designers in Germany waiting uh, to actually receive information from us. So if you're interested in seeing your idea or your team's idea mocked up, uh, you can hand your, us your business card or just write your uh, email address on your on your uh, little sheet um, and we will email you tomorrow yep. tomorrow ish <laughs> yeah. uh, the six hour time difference helps us a little bit um, uh, mid morning tomorrow and you'll be able to see what it looks like in a mock-up um, we will also be around as a group uh, at 6:30 for in the what they call the speakers lounge right over there and also be milling around uh, during the uh, they call happy hour right yeah um, so, with whichever place you're in, we're happy to chat about this. We've got, uh, we just gave you a little hint of robotic processing automation. Um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that she's also been working on, electric vehicles. There's just, there's so much happening in the space right now. We just wanted to give you a little bit of hint of what uh, ICON can do, make it a little bit of fun, and, uh, and follow up with you. Uh, if you have any other questions for us, I know that there's another thing for us to go to. Um, you can uh, reach out to us. There's also, on the backs of your chairs, there is swag as you would expect. But in that swag, there is contact information on each uh, of the uh, little areas that I just mentioned in terms of uh, what Energy Consulting does. Um, and then if you can also just find any of us, we have our business cards, you've got our names, um, so we'll be happy to chat with you. Partner or client. Is anything, guys? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot.